Hello, my name is Zach Moss. I study U.S. and Western security policy, and right now I'm coming back from Europe into the U.S., and I wanted to do a video real quick about the fact that Europe, specifically the European Union, they actually decided that they're going to retaliate against Russia if Russia invades Ukraine, which is very interesting. So, more specifically, and if you guys are listening to this, I'm showing my sources on the screen right now. More specifically, Russia allegedly has tens of thousands of military soldiers on the border between Russia and Ukraine. However, the U.S. military claims it's more like up to 100,000. Now, the question is, well, what is the European Union doing right now? Well, the very first time, which is very interesting, the first time in eight years since the skirmishes between Ukraine and Russia started, the European Union finally decided, huh, maybe we should do a little bit more about this situation. So what they decided to do was send an individual, his name is Burrell. He's a diplomat and is a really studious diplomat they call high representatives, which is just a really fancy way of saying important diplomats. So they sent this representative for the first time in eight years to the border between Ukraine and Russia to kind of understand what exactly is going on in this region. Now, I have my little notes here on my phone, so bear with me here. But Moscow's response came in four different flavors. First of all, they just denied that anything's going on. They're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing's happening. Just ignore the tens of thousands or up to 100,000 troops on the border right there with a country that they're already having skirmishes with. Number two, they didn't comment on the diplomats' visit, which is very interesting. Number three, they actually argued that Ukraine is being aggressive for bulking up their defenses against Russia, more specifically moving troops into the east against Russia and increasing their defenses. And number four, Russia wants a security guarantee from the U.S. and NATO to halt operations or expansion into Eastern Europe. So obviously this gets very interesting very quick. The U.S. role is also pretty fascinating because the U.S., had a conversation, specifically Biden already had an hour-long conversation with Putin where he said, hey, I'm going to defend Ukraine. However, we don't plan on militarily attacking you if you decide to not invade, which is interesting. So it's like, hey, we're going to do something, but make sure you don't do something first, which is interesting. So again, What's fascinating about this situation is really the U.S.'s role, which is also mostly what I wanted to talk about right now. So the U.S. is actually, but he, they might, might allegedly, according to the Military Times, which is the U.S. military's media outlet, the U.S. has been planning for years to try to move troops away from Afghanistan before Biden even said that he was going to do this, which, by the way, I called that like over a year ago, not to, you know, rub my own ego or however the saying goes. So move troops into the Indo-Pacific, which is that ocean where it's like Russia, India, China. There's an ocean right there. That's the Indo-Pacific. So we want to challenge likely Russia from the, what is that, east and also their west in Europe, the European side, the Eastern European side. So the U.S. is already making moves to expand into Eastern Europe. And they're doing this through putting 200 U.S. National Guardsmen into Kosovo, which is a country near Ukraine, relatively near Ukraine, I mean. Depends kind of, you know, your perception on that. It's in Eastern Europe. Let's just put it that way. The U.S. is sending military equipment to Ukraine, which they likely have troops there already as well. And we also sending, I believe it was, let me double check on that. It was F-16 jets to Poland. So the U.S. is making moves there. The question is, what is going to happen next? Well, the U.S. and Russia are going to have a conference in Geneva on January 9th to January 10th, which is going to be fascinating. I'm a little worried if Biden shows up because I don't trust his conversations with Putin, even though they've happened virtually already. I don't know how that's going to work out very well or how it's going to work out. I don't think it's going to work out very well. Last thing I want to say here, which is really fascinating, is that Russia doesn't, specifically Putin, excuse me, not Russia, largely, Putin specifically, he does not like to negotiate with the European Union. My hypothesis is that it's because he feels left out. They'll negotiate with the U.S. and NATO, so Europe while the U.S. is leading, but not Europe exclusively by themselves. So we'll see what happens. What I do know is that Biden made a promise to Ukraine not to make plans about Ukraine without them being in the meeting. So I think what the meeting is mostly going to be about is whether or not Russia is going to invade and what the U.S. is going to do as a response. Do I think that there's going to be a war between Russia and Ukraine? I'm leaning towards no, but it's very dependent on what Biden decides to do next. 
and whether or not Russia thinks that Biden will, in fact, invade if Russia attacks Ukraine. What do you think? Do you think Russia is going to attack Ukraine? Yes or no? And I'm speaking within the next, let's say, four years. Yes or no?